humanism, so as a practice, uh, has its birth like practice perhaps in the Renaissance. In the Renaissance. Yet did we follow Remy Bragg in 1840 in an article entitled To For Geschichte des Marxistischen Humanismus Begriff, The Ancient History of the Marxist Idea of Humanism. Ruiz's word appropriation, humanismus, was translated in French by Proudhon and in English by George Jacob Holyoke in 1846. So cultivating humanities meant at that time to assure a comprehension of the world centered in humans and not in God. It means in its core a decentry of God. As Bragg points out, this progressive century in humans could be narrated in four steps. First, differentiation. Humans comprehend themselves specifically different to the animals. Second, superiority. They are better than the other species. Third, conquest. Humans should dominate the cosmos. And four, exclusion of everyone that exists above them. That is, Bragg, les propos de l'homme sur une légitimité menacée. That's this, this idea. So uh, these are four steps so differentiation, then uh, superiority, then, ex uh, uh, excuse me, so differentiation, second, superiority, third, conquest, and fourth, exclusion. So that kind of war centering humans at the expense of environment, animals, and God has become a war falling out with humans. As products of the self-centered human rationality, we can acknowledge some characteristics of our world, as for example, pan-technicality, bioengineering, pan-virtuality, hyper-economic rationalism. This, uh, like most, has um, I spoke today to neoliberal public management. This neoliberal public management, I think, has embodied an idea of humans and humanism. It's embodied in the way that our uh, European Commission is acting. There is not outside humanism, that is my view. No? The problem is the idea of humanism and humans that uh, he is uh, carrying uh, are these levels describe a post-human world in which humans, as such, uh, as such, seems to be superfluous, or at least collateral actors, or the main current, current of technical and economical processes driven by impersonal powers, seems to be impersonal. So Blaidotti, in her book, The Post-Human, describes very well the kind of life that we can imagine in a post-human society. A life beyond self, a life beyond the species, a life beyond death, and a life beyond theory. A celebration in this post human condition conducts humans towards extinction. So problems will arise in our societies in the next in the next years. I'm, I'm really uh, convinced uh, about that. Yet this post human world is inhabited by humans. Or as Bragg asserts, Après la destruction de l'humanisme, il n'y a toujours rien de plus haut que l'homme. Or, as Bradotti uh, declares on the conclusion of the quote book, not all of us can say with even a modicum of certainty that we have actually become part human or that we are only deaf. Some of us insist on feeling quite attached to the human. And she follows, the post-human predicament enforces the necessity to think again and to think harder about the status of the human. That means for her mainly to account for new forms of subjectivity that breaks with the androcentric and eurocentric humanism. She's committed with the nomadic subject, as many of us know. How to imagine a uh, decentral self? I, 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 uh, I agree with, uh, with Rossi in this idea um, looking for a decentral self. 
this is, in my view, the core of the challenge to escape from the post-human consequences of what right out the course the androcentric humanism. She, she begs for the subconscious view, in, fact, in my view. And uh, nevertheless, I think it's possible to imagine another way of the centering self, another, pos another possibility, another possibility to interpret ourselves, to act in other ways. Because interpretation, as here some of you, I think, I have uh, had, uh, uh, said the word, interpretation is crucial for what humans uh, we are. We interpret ourselves and we act uh, following the interpretation that we are from ourselves. We are reflective, uh, as our European societies no? reflective. So uh, by interpreting the human as a conscious, <coughs> eccentric being. Humans are the only beings in the material world that can inconsidering themselves for the sake of others. Otherness, I will um, express in that way this idea, otherness is his, her most characteristic capacity. Instinct, self-preservation, remains always in its centrality because it has a determinate Horizon. In the opposite side, humans are open to an indeterminate horizon by their contemplative capacity, not confined, confined to the instant. Animals remain innocent in their centrality. On the contrary, humans remain in their centrality only mala fide. Their characteristic openness and otherness makes possible benevolence that is, in my view, the core of every commonality. One of the expression of that way of life is the creation of cities. This civilizing human capacity stands out not only the selfishness of the human world, defined by the rationalist humanists, but also the incapacity of interactions initiative of machines and other material objects. Then the topic civic humanities focuses on aspects of humanities related with the study of this capacity of otherness of humans that allow them to create commonality and overcome the current dislocation of humanities. Actually, many of our institutes of humanities are dealing with topics related to this general displacement of humanities research that could be added to those of, for example, radiative prices in the quoted book and were already object of other chic um, meetings. Environmental humanities, digital humanities, biogenetic humanities, or global humanities. I, I think this topic, civil humanities, could be very interesting to, uh, to get together many of the aspect of, of, uh, aspects of our research. The topics comprehended in such a general topic level as civic humanities are, um, could, be, could be, among others, so political imaginaries of the limit, citizenship studies, public space and publicity, virtual communities, family, and communities of interpretation like nations, religions, cultural habitats, tradition, or historical narratives. The concept of the community is of seminal importance for building the idea of civic humanities, because not only contains one of the main aspects of human life, their capacity of challenge everywhere the distinction between inside and outside, but also includes the aspect of temporality. The future is to be achieved by sharing the path with others. Identity is a dynamic and shared conscious quality of humans. In particular, community of interpretation is a common place to refer to communities that deserve meaning to life, shaping identity, because their capacity for achieve shared practice and knowledge. In this sense, as uh, today was also referred here, um, they are political. Nor are 
they are not even if they are not doing policies, they are political because we share meanings and we uh, we allow the differentiation in society, so diversity. In the above communities of learning, uh, Muse and Crossley speak of communities of learning, for example, to designate the insight that all new ideas are developed in the context of a community, whether academic, religious, or simply as a network of friends. Even without the development of formal educational structures, ideas are developed and transmitted in the framework of a community of interpretation. There are many and very different formal and informal groups which humanities are growing, most of them beyond the traditional scholarship. Far from being passive recipients of messages, they are actively engaging in a process of appropriation and transformation of knowledge and expanding their discurs discursive horizons. Communities of interpretation make our societies reflective ones. Uh, Horizon 22 likes to, to, to explain that, no? or to reflect the societies. Of course, religious communities constitute nowadays very relevant communities. So my project here in the ICS is religion and society, and because of that, I'm very focused on, the, on this kind of communities. Uh, there are very relevant communities intervening from inside the community in the public sphere. But there are also new and very different possibilities of sharing meanings, wisdom, and knowledge in order to experience an acknowledgement. It is also the case of nations, cultural or ethnical guilds, virtual communities, guilds in positive sense, it's not <laughs> sense, even if, if, I, if I'm using a, a medieval word. No? Virtual communities, public space, uh, universities, academic institutes, political communities, or every kind that share an idea of citizenship, and also, for example, some museums, art traditions, literacy. Um, there is many possibilities in this sense. I think that uh, research of this kind can be a very relevant in the European community, and I think also that it's very arguable to, to, to think that this kind of uh, research could be of importance for uh, the political community.